Alrighty. Well, this is Julie. I'm here with Angie today and we're going to do passive range of motion on the upper extremity. So before we start passive range of motion, we always explain to the patient what to expect, what the purpose is, what they should do. So we'll say, hi Angie, I'm Julie. I'm here to do physical therapy. We're going to do passive range of motion on your shoulder. Passive range of motion is a gentle technique designed just to keep your flexibility. It won't make you strong or anything like that, but it is designed to help keep stiffness away. I want you just to relax. There should not be any discomfort. If something bothers you, be sure to let me know. Sound okay? Sounds good. Alrighty. So before I get started, I'm going to move our pillow out of the way so that's not an issue. And we're going to start with scapular movements. I'm going to cradle her arm with my hand closest to her feet and my top hand is going to suction cup onto her scapula. Once I'm in this position, I'll do scapular elevation and depression, elevation and depression, elevation and depression. That's three. Now retraction, protraction, retraction, protraction, retraction, protraction. We're doing three to five and as many as up to 10. The next joint is the shoulder. We're going to start with shoulder flexion. In this position, I'm going to give her a little bit of traction, bring the arm up overhead. My other hand applies the convex concave rule, bringing the arm all the way down as far as it goes to the end field. Traction, convex concave, back in there. And that's our third repetition of shoulder flexion. Our next movement is abduction. Remember for abduction, we always want the thumb pointing towards the patient's head. So we roll the arm out into a little bit of external rotation. My um, hand here is gonna give her traction. This hand will apply the convex concave force as we move her arm up overhead. There's one and two. Feeling okay? Mm -hmm. From here, we'll move into shoulder external and internal rotation. For external rotation, I just guide her arm back, feeling for the end feel. Don't want to go past the end feel, that would be stretching. Turn around, and now for internal rotation, I'll place my forearm across the top of the shoulder to hold that in place and eliminate any substitution she might do as we bring her down into internal rotation. Our next movement now is horizontal or adduction and abduction. Her body applies the convex concave force so we don't have to worry about hand placement in this position. Our next joint now will be the elbow. For the elbow, my support underneath the elbow itself, bring her up into flexion with a forearm in supination. Bring her out into extension, into pronation. So flexion with supination, extension with pronation. Flexion and supination, extension and pronation. After I've done my three to five, I'll move down to the forearm, and here we'll do specifically pronation and supination, rolling her arm like it's a little bit of a piece of Play-Doh, back and forth, getting our three to five and up to 10. From here now, we'll move down to the wrist. In the hand, we wanna be careful of the tickle areas, so we'll support the hand across the knuckle area. My other hand is gonna support her here, and now we'll do wrist flexion and extension, letting the fingers do what they wanna do. There's flexion and extension, and now radial deviation toward the thumb, ulnar deviation toward the pinky. Radial and ulnar, radial and ulnar, from here, I need to move down and I can do um, the fingers themselves or the thumb. I'll start with the fingers. I'm gonna have them all the way up here into extension, curl them up 
all together for flexion, extension, flexion, and extension, flexion, and extension. And then remember that the fingers do a little bit of A, B, and A deduction. So we'll just go back and forth working those. If a patient has a single finger with a specific problem, I will give that finger individual attention and each joint individual attention. But most of the time we can just do them all together. Now before I finish the hand, we want to do the thumb. Remember the thumb is a little bit different because flexion is in the pl plane of the palm, extension is in the plane opposite still the palm but coming in the opposite direction of flexion and then when we do her AB duction it's perpendicular to the palm and AD duction AB and AD AB and AD and then finish up with opposition making that big circular movement doing all right yep all the way around now before we finish the upper extremity, we need to remember our multi-joint muscle stretches. There are two for the upper extremity. And so we say to the patient, we're going to spend just a little extra time on the area here on the front side and the back side of your wrist. You might feel a little pressure, should still not be real uncomfortable. If it's too much, you let me know. And so now I'm going to bring her into wrist flexion and I'm going to curl the fingers underneath doing finger flexion at the same time. Bring it out and let it rest. There's the wrist and add the fingers. Bring it out, wrist flexion and finger flexion. Bring it out. And now we'll do the opposite where we're going to do wrist extension and finger extension. Feel okay? Mm -hmm. There's wrist extension add the finger extension, and the last one, wrist extension and finger extension. That's upper extremity, passive range of motion, including the multi-joint muscle stretches.